So we're here with Rachel Gardner, the owner and wedding planner of Crest Butte Events. Hi, Hi. Rachel. How Hi, Rebecca. Today? I'm good. Good. So how did you get to be a wedding planner? I started out in advertising and was a project manager, which is actually extremely similar to wedding planning and probably all event planning. I um, just took those skills of managing different personalities and different, you know, the designer, or the programmer, or the client, all of that. Um, I just took those skills and moved it over to wedding planning, which is the same. Photographer, caterer, Absolutely. family, <laughs> DJ, all of that. So You do a little bit of everything. Um, and what is it that you do for your brides? Can you talk about the process? What sure. What you do with them? We, it depends. Most of our brides are destination. That's what we primarily get in Crest Butte. Mm -hmm. So we don't see them face to face very often. If I get, you know, my wish, then I would have them in town for at least two weekends before the wedding. It doesn't have to be a weekend, two day, you know, two separate trips. Mm -hmm. And on the first trip, I would like to hit all of the, the big things, the venue, the photographer, the entertainment, the food, all of kind of the nuts and bolts, make sure that we have exactly what they want and a good plan for the size of their group, for the budget of their group, for their dream, all of that sort of stuff. If I'm lucky enough to get them back on a second trip, then we want to go into more detail. We want to get really nitpicky about flowers and napkins and signage, whatever it is that's important to them. Um, I want to make sure that we do all that stuff and set it up in the office as it's going to look that day so that we don't have any surprises. I'm not surprised. They're not worried. They've already seen it. Um, so that's what we do on the second visit. The way we set up our planning structure is that we do a mandatory monthly check-in, whether that's on the phone or via email or a combination. They have to speak to us once a month. Right. They generally speak to us a lot more, and that's great, but it's busy. Sure. You know, they've, everybody's got jobs. So, <clears throat> so we make sure that at least once a month we talk about whatever's on topic that month, whether it be timeline or, hey, we haven't told the baker what flavor we want, mm -hmm. those types of things. And then about mm, four to six weeks out is when we request that their RSVPs come in. And at that point, really, they have the ability to step out of the process, wrap up things at work, get their personal life in order to go on this vacation and then go on their honeymoon. And that's when we really get extra busy. That's all, again, of the nitpicky things. The seating chart, how the tables are going to be placed in the venue, does the transportation timing still make sense with our final guest count? All of these things that come up. And, and then it's, it's wedding week. We like to <laughs> meet with them one last time as soon as they hit town, nice. but before their friends and family hit town so they can truly be free. Um, and then it's us. Then we spend a couple days setting it up and a couple days breaking it down right <laughs> but <laughs> and so those first few meetings how far out do you usually have to meet with your clients to kind of get you know if you have to order linens or you know a meet sure. arrangement from caterers how long do they need to to start planning that a year is great okay. crested butte hasn't been as traditional as other venues in the sense that if you don't have your venue booked one year out forget it you're not going to get anything right um I will say Crested Butte is getting much more popular as a destination. Mm -hmm. So certain months of the year, July, September, you do need to be thinking a year out because those dates get, get snatched up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Especially having, if you're particular, right? About your location or your photographer exactly, or your wedding planner. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And being in a rural area, there are a lot of benefits to it. I think that you get some more customized service, some more personalization that you wouldn't get in a city. Mm -hmm. um, but that also means that some of your resources are limited. We don't have a million DJ companies. You know, we don't have a million bands to choose from. Some of those things we need to bring in from other areas. So a year's great, six months works. Okay. <laughs> And how often do you think you are looking outside of the valley for 
vendors? I mean, do you have to order a lot of stuff online or are you getting DJs and musicians from Denver? A lot? We try to do everything within our local community. Okay. And that includes Gunnison in my mind. Sure. Um, there are some things like the wedding band. If you want a 12 person wedding cover band, that's going to play everything from Sinatra to Prince. We're going to need to source Denver. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because there are a plethora of those bands out there. It's just dollars to get them here. Sure. Um, as far as decor items and linens, things like that, some of that we bring in from out of Valley, but what we've been working on as a rental company the last few years is acquiring a lot of the vases, the votives, the signage, all of these things that girls are certainly welcome to purchase themselves, bring with them, do it yourself projects, whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people just find this to be too time consuming um, and too expensive. Right. So what we've been doing is trying to grow that rental inventory in this valley so that you, you have those options, you have nice things to choose from, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg, and you know, we might not even be your planner. You, you might be working without a planner or you might be working with another company but we're still more than happy to offer you all of the decor rentals, linens, all of those types of things. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we're here in your office we are. space, and I can <laughs> see that there is lots of different stuff to choose from, which is really great. There's you a have quite a storage downstairs. A lot. It's <laughs> so you will rent then to a couple if they're not working with you directly? Absolutely. That's nice. Absolutely. That's and really we nice. work with every florist in the Valley, and it's we try to make it as easy as possible. Just Tell us what you want, send your floors down, they'll pick up the vase, we'll deliver, whatever. Whatever makes it easy. So if somebody came to you, what would be the first things that you would talk to them about? And what are the first decisions that they need to be making? I would talk about budget first. Weddings are expensive. It doesn't even matter if you're skipping on the extras and the frou-frou. It's expensive sure. to offer food and beverage to 100 people. Right. Um, so budgets first, you know, it should be a celebration. It should be fun. You should have whatever you want. You shouldn't go into debt over this. Right. So it that's our one day. It's one day, <laughs> but it's a very special day. <laughs> it is special, but you, you shouldn't go into debt. And that's the first conversation that we have, because I find that if you don't have that conversation first, that's where problems are going to arise between us and our clients, but also within the family, sure. you know, that's the stress. Nobody wants a financial surprise. So. And then will you help them make decisions about their locations? Do you have a list of venues and vendors that you're offering to them? Um, are you pointing them to a certain website or? Yes and no. We do have a list of vendors that we work with commonly, but we don't provide a vendor list um, or necessarily try to steer them in any particular direction because it is really personal. Um, I prefer that they work with in-town vendors. I think sure. that we know our area best and we can provide the best service. But if their childhood friend is a photographer and that's who they really want to use, I'm not going to stand in their way because it's a very personal decision. Um, the Crested Butte Gunnison Wedding Council or Wedding Guide um, is a good resource for brides to go and look and see all the different vendors' portfolios and, and make their own decision first, their first cut. I don't, it's not my wedding, so I don't like to be saying, oh, you know, use this restaurant or use this photographer or sure. go green and white. It's, it's really <laughs> up to them, so I like them to make the first cut. But maybe you'll lead them with a little bit of direction if they're looking for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would definitely let someone know if I thought they were making a bad choice. And again, it goes back to budget. You know, there are some things that you just can't afford. Right. Now, what about seasons? Because I know that that can be an issue it can. depending <laughs> on where you live and how well you know the Crested Butte area. <laughs> In Crested Butte, the only season or the only months that I would not recommend truly would be April and May. Sure. Everything outside of that, we can work with. We've got great wildflowers, great summer. I will say summer has gotten extremely popular. So if you're looking for 
maybe some discounts. If you're looking for less hustle and bustle, you probably want to go early summer, which to us is June. <laughs> Not the rest of the world, but to us is June. It's our summer. Um, or maybe October. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what the aspen trees are going to do around here, but we've got aspens and we've got evergreens. Right. So you can really hit those golden aspens late into September and early October, and it's a little quieter around here. And I'm a personal fan of the winter wedding. I know that that's probably a mental challenge to some people, right. but winter is a great time of year here. It's always beautiful. There's always a ton to do. Your guests are extremely entertained and it's going to be unique. It's not going to be like every wedding you've been in a bridesmaid at for the last, you know, two to three years. Sure. So, and what kind of percentage do you think comparing the two seasons, summer to winter that you see weddings to be in? Uh, majority summer. Majority. I would say 90%, 90 okay. summer, 10% winter. And I think included in summer is fall. That's just something that in our area, I think has exploded in say the last three years. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? You? I think it's a small season. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small season. And we try to pack a lot in, but I think winter weddings are beautiful for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think in terms of a month for the winter is best? Because our winter is long. Oh, geez. <laughs> so um, we have anywhere from November, you know, probably up until April, depending on the season. True. I like December. I know that that butts up to the holidays. Mm -hmm. So that can be a pro and a con. Um, <clears throat> January can be really cold. Right. So if that bothers you, you should think it through. Right. <laughs> and then I would say I would say the rest of the winter is fine. I would say by the time we get towards mid-February, all the way through the end of ski season, which is either the first or second week of April, it, it starts to warm up. And we're at a high altitude. You, you feel the intensity of the sun, and it's good. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's not it nice out. frigid right. like it might be. And I guess they're going to be inside mostly. For their winter wedding with exactly. the exception of maybe a ceremony or pictures or whatnot. Although so. it's surprising how many people want to still try to get married outside sure. for winter. I think it's fine. Yeah. But um and their Wear guests are usually <laughs> far more on board. Um the parents worry about that. Sure. But the guests don't have any problem with it. And it's shorter. It's yeah. not full mass. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and so how much do you talk about the altitude you mentioned at the high altitude that we are here at? So how much do you talk about that with your bride and groom? How much do they usually mm -hmm. know? You know, what do you have to prepare the guests for that? Sure. A lot of the couples that come here have chosen it because their grandparents took them here skiing or their parents have a second home. So the couple themselves generally have a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we do like to give their guests a really thorough understanding of the altitude without overplaying it. There's no reason to be scared. Sure. You're gonna drink more water, you may or may not have a little headache, and you need to pay attention to your alcohol consumption. Okay. I like to have a glass of wine like the next person but one glass is probably equal to two or three at this altitude. And I, we just want to prepare people because it's a bummer to yeah. wake up feeling terrible. That's for sure. Do you suggest people fly into Denver, maybe stay overnight? Uh, do clients usually I don't alert you of issues yeah. that their guests might have? If someone has been at altitude before and had a bad reaction, mm -hmm. then they are going to be hypersensitive to it. And flying into Denver, staying a night, acclimatizing, and then coming up to high altitude, is a good idea, but as a general rule, I don't recommend no, that. So. Um, some people do make a family vacation out of the wedding mm -hmm. and they have a week and that's great. A lot of people are really just flying in for the weekend sure. and Denver's a ways away. So we don't, they can, there's steps they can do. They can take acclimate a little bit in advance. There's actually a prescription drug if they're really worried about it that they mm -hmm. can talk to their doctor about. But most people, I find don't have serious effects. They're a little dehydrated and they find that alcohol affects them a lot more quickly than they're used to. Yeah. And those are really the only two warning things. Stay hydrated, pay attention to how much you're drinking. Right. A couple of glasses of water for every glass of yes. alcohol. <laughs> and a good fun. rule for all of us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have you ever had really unusual requests? Anything like totally out there? 
Oh, geez. Um, I am sure that I have, and I'm not thinking of it right this instant. Or any, any client that just asked for something that you felt like you couldn't give them or that was extra difficult to get here? Do people ever ask for stuff like that? Or is it typically people who are... Well, we can actually get everything here. Okay. Surprisingly enough, we're small, we're rural, but we are an adventure destination town, which comes with all of you know the ski movies and all of that stuff. And so production-wise or getting things here actually isn't a problem. The only time I had any hiccup with getting something here was monarch butterflies. Evidently... Because we're so close to the Continental wow. Divide, the USDA has an issue with where the butterflies come from. Oh. True story. Interesting. So, so have you can't, there. they, you know, the, I think there was a company in Aspen or something that it was affordable and it was reasonable and it was quick, but it was too close to the Continental Divide. So we had to go to Washington State and then they didn't show up and they died on the UPS truck. And oh. it's a sad story for okay. the butterflies no but butterflies. no butterflies or except for the natural ones keep your here. expectations low right. if you're gonna no imp- doves. have you ever had doves you know we flying. looked for doves for a friend of mine who got married a couple weeks ago and i know that we could have gotten them um if expense were not an issue oh sure and if she really wanted them <laughs> but um we got shut down on the doves out of aspen and the doves out of grand junction because it's too cold Oh. So if you're getting married in the summer, you're probably fine doves are with okay. the doves. Okay. I, I don't know how that relates to the USDA, but they're probably okay with doves. Probably okay with it. <laughs> we do have magpies here, so if you want those, yes, naturally occurring birds, <laughs> have a plethora. They're beautiful. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. No problem. And good thanks luck for with, uh, the summer of 2014. Thank you. You as well.